Off and Running by Gary Soto. The genre is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction includes characters and events that are like people and events in real life. As you read, look for realistic characters and events, characters' feelings that seem believable, and challenges and conflicts that might exist in real life. Miata Ramirez is running for fifth grade class president with her best friend Anna as her running mate. Also running is Rudy Herrera with his friend Alec. Miata has good ideas to improve the school, but Rudy is funny and popular. It will be a close race, and both students try to convince their classmates to vote for them when election speeches are held in front of the entire class. Miata scanned the audience sitting on the floor of the multipurpose room, which was still decorated with banners for the 16th of September, Mexican Independence Day. The heads of the fifth graders wagged like apples on a branch. Miata was nervous about the debate, but this was her big chance to tell the students why they should vote for her and not for Rudy. Miata looked at Rudy sitting next to her. She could see that he was chewing gum, which was against the school rules. He was smacking his lips and waving to the boys in the audience. Blowing a bubble, Rudy turned to Miata. The bubble grew as large as a fist and popped like a fist in a baseball glove. He laughed and asked, You want some gum? No, it's against school rules, Miata said. I'm not going to get in trouble just before the election. Oh, yeah, that's right, Rudy said. He swallowed the bubble gum and opened his mouth like an alligator. His throat blared. Ah! He closed his mouth and said, See? It's all gone. That's ugly, Rudy, Miata grimaced. Rudy shrugged his shoulders. He turned his attention to the audience. Someone was yelling at Rudy to ask if he wanted to exchange his sandwich for a burrito during lunch. Rudy gave him a thumbs-up response. Miata's nervous knees shivered, and the lines on her palms ran sticky, ran with sticky sweat. She looked down at the five Miata and Anna badges on the front of her blouse. Earlier, they had seemed so neat, but now they just got in her way. People, fifth graders, let's settle down, Mrs. Castillo, the vice principal, yelled above the noise. She repeated her command, and gradually the bobbing head stopped moving. Yeah, let's knock it off, yelled Rudy, getting up to his feet. His gaze locked on two boys who were pushing each other. Carlos, leave Jaime alone. Save it for the playground. Carlos stopped shoving his friend and sat up as straight as an angel, which he was not. That's better, Rudy said. He then returned to his seat. Thank you, Rudy, Mrs. Castillo said. No problem, he said. Mrs. Castillo turned to Miata with a smile and said sweetly, We are going to hear from Miata first. She is in room six. Let's hear what she has to say. There was light applause as Miata rose from her chair and approached the podium. She climbed onto a box that was set there for her. She adjusted the microphone. Good morning, Miata said. It's almost afternoon, Carlos yelled. Miata looked at the clock on the wall and then at Carlos. She decided to ignore him. She continued with a bright chime in her voice. I'm seeking your votes next Thursday. I want to be your president. President of the United States, Carlos yelled through the funnel of his hands. With that, Mrs. Castillo, now stern face, shook a finger at him. He returned to sitting as straight as an angel. Miata breathed in as she gathered strength. She inflated her lungs and boomed. If elected, I plan to beautify the school grounds. I want to get rid of all that cholo graffiti and put some flowers in by our fifth grade rooms. Some of the students, mostly girls, applauded. I'm sure you're tired of a cochino-looking school. Miata boomed even louder. There was more applause, but not enough to make Miata confident. She eyed Anna in the audience. Anna hadn't clapped that hard. Miata clicked her tongue and thought, Come on, Anna, let's get with it. Those are good ideas, Anna remarked, not too bravely. She looked around at the audience. No one was applauding. Miata paused, somewhat shaken. She had practiced with Anna on the school grounds, but now, behind the podium, the words didn't seem as powerful. I plan to get parents involved, Miata continued. I want them to help with the cleanup. Only one student applauded. It's Carlos. He was applauding as hard as rain on a car roof. He, would, he wouldn't stop until Mrs. Castillo beckoned him with a finger. 
He was being called out of the room. He rose to his feet and said, I'll vote for you, Miata. You're nicer. Then looking at Rudy, Carlos stepped over his classmate sitting on the floor. Nah, I better vote Rudy. I owe him a quarter. He was prodded from the multi-purpose room toward the principal's office. Just think, Miata said her voice weak. She was losing her confidence. We can put some really nice azaleas and pansies outside our windows. The walls will be all clean, not like they are now. She looked at her scribbled notes, then up toward the audience. It'll be work, but we can do it. The audience scrunched up their faces. And I have plans for a school trip, Miata countered quickly, sensing that she was losing her listeners. And I have fundraising ideas for how we can get computers. The audience yawned. Two posters that said vote for Miata and Anna sank down. I have a question, a boy said, his hand as tall as a spear. Yes. Are we going to get paid to work? His face was lit with a grin. He knew he was being silly. No, we're not getting paid. It's for our school. The student muttered but applauded lightly. A few of the posters went up again in a rattle but quickly sank down. Please think of me when you vote on Thursday, Miata said. Her voice was now as faint as a baby bird's chirp. She sat down exhausted. She wanted to shake her head in defeat, but knew that she had to sit up bravely. She waved at the audience, but only a few students waved back. Not one of them was a boy. Then Rudy stood up. He approached the podium and leaped up onto the box. Hey, I like this, he laughed. As he held onto the podium, he wobbled the box and said, It's for the skateboard. The audience laughed. From where she sat, Miata could see that more than one boy was chewing bubblegum. Rudy then became serious. He looked at Miata and said, She's got some ideas. Miata would make a good prez, but I think I would make a truly great one. The audience laughed. And you know why? Rudy asked. Why? Some of the boys in the audience responded. Rudy turned and cupped an ear to the audience. I can't hear you. Why? yelled a mixed group of boys and girls. Still can't hear you. Rudy smiled. Why? the entire audience yelled. Rudy nodded his head, smiling. He had their attention. It's because I'm going to work to get us more recess time. The audience applauded and chanted, More recess, more recess, more recess. Yeah, hint they? Instead of just 15 minutes, I'm going to ask the principal for 20 at least. Maybe even half an hour, homeboys. Why not an hour? someone yelled from the audience. We can't push our luck, dude, Rudy responded. Miata wanted to cover her face. It was obvious that the audience was siding with Rudy. Rudy raised his hands and asked for silence. Plus, he continued as he slowly scanned the audience. Plus, I'm going to ask for ice cream day every day, not just on Fridays. The audience roared as Rudy wobbled the box and then jumped off. He returned to his seat, pushing a fresh piece of bubblegum into his mouth. You got good ideas, Rudy said with confidence. Good luck. Buena suerte. He extended a hand. Yeah, thanks. I'll need it, Miata said in a whisper as she stood up and shook Rudy's hand, which was as cool as a lizard's. Good luck to you too, Rudy. After the debate, the students returned to their classroom. Miata tried to put on a good face. Most of the girls knew that Rudy was a joker. They knew he could never get that extra five minutes of recess or ice cream day five days a week. But the boys might believe him. Miata needed a new strategy. After school, she returned home and started her homework behind the closed door of her bedroom. But her mind stalled. She kept looking at the photo of herself taken in Mexico when she was five years old. She was on a pony. Her smile was big and her eyes lit with happiness. That was fun, she whispered as she remembered how her uncle Jorge led her around the yard. At the time, she had thought that she was going really fast, but now she knew that she must have been going slower than a trot. Miata put down her homework and looked in her scrapbook at her dad's family in Mexico. Her grandparents and uncles and aunts, they all lived north of Guadalajara on a rancho. Then toward dark, she heard her father come home. She heard the screen door slam and his heavy trudge to the kitchen. She heard the groans of the faucet and her father calling, Miata, Banaka. Miata let the pencil roll from her hand. She was tired of doing her math problems. See, Miata yelled as she scooted back her chair. She hurried into the living room. What's up, Poppy? 
I found something at work. What? A most unusual thing. Tell me, what is it? He was holding a small white box in his hand. It scared me when I found it. Her father's face was dark with worry and dust from his long hours at work. Miata furrowed her brow. She was curious. Slowly, her father lifted the lid from the box. Miata peeked in, standing up on her tiptoes. In it stood an adult index finger that was as gnarled as a root. She eyed her father and clicked her tongue. Where do you think that came from, Mia? Her father asked seriously. He petted the finger with his free hand. From your left hand, Poppy. Miata answered, hands on her hips. That's where it came from. A sudden smile brightened his face. He wriggled the finger around the box and screamed, Ay, it's coming alive. I better put it down the garbage disposal. He ran into the kitchen, laughing, and Miata followed her father, but he only got himself another glass of water. Dad, Miata asked, taking his large, work-stained hands into hers. Yeah, Miha? He wiped his mouth with the back of his free hand. Do you think I should run for office? She hesitated and then continued. I mean, I'm not as popular as Rudy or his friend Alex. Well, popularity is one thing, but service is another. Entiende? Miata shook her head. She was confused. I mean, it's okay to have a lot of people who like you, but it's far better to help people to get things done. He gave her a light hug. Don't worry. Just go for it. If it doesn't happen, pues, you can still do it. You can still do good. Miata liked that. She had plans for the school, and they were good ones.